Okay, you guys, you got to do that again. You didn't have the sound and the camera on, so do that again, please. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I have really had a happy birthday today. I got up early this morning, and a dear friend was on the uh, line. And uh, actually, I woke up real early, and uh, I looked at an email that came from her. And she's a, she's a real good friend and uh, excellent prayer warrior and does a lot of good things. And she had a thing on the video, and I called her and got her to come on my show today so she was on my show today at 12 and her name is Janet Porter she's a great mighty woman for God and uh, does a great great work all across the country and uh, but today's been a great day I heard from my daughter down in Florida and uh, praise God for that of course and uh, my uh, Facebook and my Twitter and everything has just been Rolling all day long with uh, very brief messages, but all happy birthday <laughs> from people all literally all over the world. I had people from Israel and and uh, Ghana and uh, where else? Several countries. People sending me emails and sending me Facebooks and saying happy birthday, Pastor. <laughs> so to God be the glory. Great things He's done, and I do thank the Lord for giving me another birthday. I'm 73, in case somebody's wondering. I was born November the 23rd, 1943, and that makes me 73. And I praise God, he's been so good to me, in spite of the fact that I abused my life uh, for many years. God allowed me to have healing, turn my back on a lot of stuff, and serve him and I thank the Lord for that. I'm still a long way from where I ought to be, but I sure am glad I'm not where I used to be. <laughs> Amen. And uh, one of the things they did in the early days was blow the shofar for a lot of reasons. And one was, <clears throat> if I had a shofar blower here, I'd let them blow it. But I don't think anybody here knows how to blow the shofar. But, uh, so I'll blow it for myself. <laughs> but they blew the shofar <clears throat> many, many times for birthday celebrations as well as other celebrations. So celebrate with me as we blow the shofar. Send your prayers up with the celebration sound uh, to heaven. <laughs> thank the Lord for the shofar. It is loud and harsh in some ways and yet soft. And that's the way God wants us to be. He wants us to be hard when we have to be and soft when we need to be as well. So please pray for me and pray for all of us. We've been going through a lot as a church and as a nation and uh, we want to just keep turning to God as often as we can and do as much as we can. This week is a special week. It's uh, the week of Thanksgiving. For those of you that uh, might be watching somewhere in town or across town, <clears throat> tomorrow morning, and for those here, tomorrow morning at 1030, a dear pastor friend of mine, he and I have been friends for, oh yeah, I don't know, 15, maybe 20 years, his name is uh, Brother Wright, and uh, he has True Unity Baptist Church over in Anaheim. He and his dear wife are, are great ministers of the gospel, and they help the poor and the homeless as well. They don't have as much as what we do, but they do help. And they always, for many years, many years ago, he came to me and said, uh, We'd like to come over on Thanksgiving Day. I know you're busy all year long and you give people stuff, but we'd like to come over and help you on Thanksgiving Day. 
And I said, come on down. We can use all the help we can get. <laughs> so they came, and they began to come. And <clears throat> so now for many, many years, they do it. And usually in October, they'll give me a note and say, we're coming on Thanksgiving Day. Is that okay? <laughs> and they've been doing it now for a long time. <clears throat> so tomorrow at 1030, they'll drive up out here in the back parking lot. <clears throat> Sometimes they bring vans, sometimes they just bring cars or SUVs or whatever, but they'll, they'll show up out there at 1030, and they'll fill the vehicles, and we encourage you to go with them. Now, it takes about two hours, so you've got to have a little time, because it's a one-way trip. <laughs> you go with them, and they bring you back. And uh, so I would encourage you to be here by 1030, maybe a little before, so they can get loaded up and get everybody loaded up. And, after they get everybody loaded up, and it seems like everybody's here that's going to be here, they then uh, load up the vans or the cars and have a word of prayer and then drive over to the Anaheim area. It's not very far. And uh, they go to that church over there, and uh, they'll feed you, you know, all the typical turkey and dressing and all the stuff. It'll be a nice, nice meal, desserts and everything. They'll feed you a nice meal, and from time to time they give out different things. Sometimes it's just socks, sometimes it's jackets, uh, various stuff that they give out. And so uh, I would encourage you, if you have the time, if you can, a couple of hours, come at 1030, come a little before, so they don't have to wait on you. <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> be there, men, women, boys and girls, and if you know friends, tell them come on over and go with you. And it's free, doesn't cost anything, and uh, you'll enjoy it. They'll have a lot of good music, a lot of good food, a lot of fun stuff. Any of you here been there before? Okay, Teresa has, he has, anybody else? All right. Uh, I think you'll enjoy it, and uh, I would encourage you to come. That starts at about 10.30, and it'll go till uh, 12.30, you know, about maybe one, but back here. You won't be gone that long. And then they'll bring you back here. And uh, what we have traditionally done here on Thanksgiving is <clears throat> everybody always wants, are y'all going to have Thanksgiving? You're going to have big lunch for Thanksgiving? No. <laughs> We're going to already have had lunch. You will have had it. And you'll come back over here lunchish time. But uh, we will have our evening meal at 5 o'clock like we always do. But it will be uh, donated. It won't be that our ladies don't have to do much preparation because a lot of people on Thanksgiving decide that's a time to help the poor and the homeless. And, and they bring food over. So there'll be a lot of good food brought tomorrow. So it's an eating time. <laughs> you go over for that meeting and, and, and have music and eating. And then you come back here and we'll eat again. Uh, I'll be here in the morning. I won't be going over there with you. Uh, not because I don't want to go, but because I just have some other things that I have to take care of. But I encourage you to go. Don't, don't go just because I'm not there. But go. You'll enjoy the pastor and his dear wife. They're great, lovely people. An African-American couple, but they love the Lord and, and uh, just really great, great people. And you need to meet them. So go over there tomorrow, 1030. And then come back here and enjoy the afternoon. I don't know what the weather is going to be like. I haven't seen the weather report, but hopefully it won't be raining. We're having nice weather here in Southern California. For those of you watching on television, we do welcome you. This is the First Southern Baptist Church and Messianic Fellowship. And that's why we blow the shofar. We blow the shofar for celebrations. We blow the shofar for Shabbat Shalom. We would encourage you on uh, Friday night at sundown. And now it's about... What time are we starting? 6.30? About 6.30. It's already dark, but we're starting at about 6.30 on Friday night. And then we do it again on Saturday night at 6.30 as well. That's the Sabbath. That's what the Bible says the Sabbath is from Friday night to Saturday night. And we would encourage you to come and be a part of it. Continue to be a part of our church. Continue to help us. Continue to cooperate. Continue to do what you can to help us. And let me say to each of you ladies... First of all, thank you, ladies, for your help in the kitchen, your special touch in the kitchen, 
And then to you men, thank you for your extra help in picking up and cleaning up and doing what you do. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And um, my thank yous are not really anything, but that thanks comes from the Lord. The Lord will honor you. The Lord will bless you if you continue to do what you're doing. I know it's tough, and I know sometimes it's no thanks. We don't thank you as often as we should, and we forget. Please forgive us for that. But know that God will not let you go un rewarded. He will reward you for that. Now, I wonder if there are any prayer requests or praise reports. Anybody would like to share? Yes, ma'am. Oh, okay. 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 So join me for my special surprise in the kitchen after uh, the services tonight. And I had already said this, not because of that, but I'd already said that I was going to cut you loose a little early tonight as my Thanksgiving gift to you. And, and I'm even e more eager to do it now that I'm expecting a surprise. <laughs> so thank you for that. But when we dismiss here, in fact, let's do this. Let's go ahead and get our ushers up here. Would you guys come on up? And we don't want to, we always want to take care of all of our housekeeping items. That is, we want to have these guys bring the offering plates back. And remember the project we have down in Missouri. That's the cross project there in the blue box. If you'd like to put something in there, you're welcome to do it. And you people keep donating. We've been doing it now for about five years. Four years, something like that, and the money keeps coming in, $100 every month, and we get it to them, and uh, they're going to build that cross, and we'll have video on it one of these days, and once it's up there, and it'll be used to tell people about Jesus. That's the main goal of it, okay? So, praise the Lord for that, and when we dismiss in a little bit, we're going to reconvene in the fellowship hall for a surprise. And I know about it, but I don't know what it is. So uh, you join us over there when we finish in here. And uh, to those that have done that, thank you so much. And God bless you. Thank you for all you do here. Thank you for your prayers for me. I did have a chance to talk with my daughter today. Had lunch with one of my other daughters, my second oldest daughter and her husband. He's in school. He's a school teacher over in L.A district and so he had the day off and so they called me up and said we'd like to get together for lunch we're off tomorrow so they came over we went to olive garden today for lunch and had a great fellowship time with them and we just praise god for them and uh, continue to pray for all of our families anybody else have any other prayer requests you'd like to share yes sir Okay, all right. Pray for that mom, dear mom. Moms have a tough job, tough job. So pray for her, amen. We, Lord, we come before you for this mom. We don't know the circumstances, but we don't need to. You know them, Lord, and we just ask that you would minister to her. Anybody else have anything they'd like to share? Please continue. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry? I want to out a healing prayer for Okay. All right. Very good. Thank you so much for that. And let's continue to pray one for another. And uh, please continue to pray for all of our families. We, we're a fairly large family here, and then we have extended families all over the country. We would encourage you, if you'd like to be a part of this ministry, you can by coming and being a part, or you can... Donate. I got a check in the mail today from a man who called me up about a week ago and said, how can I help? And I said, well, you can pray. He said, well, I know that, but how else can I help? And I said, well, whatever you'd like to give, come and help us. Well, he said, I can't come there, but I can send you a check. And uh, so he sent a check. It came in the mail today. And so if you're listening out there in TV land, and you'd like to help us with this ministry, 
The mailing address is First Southern Baptist. Those three words. Uh, put that on your check or your money order, First Southern Baptist. And send it to us here at the church and we put it in the bank account and I promise you we'll do the best we possibly can. We'll stretch that dollar as far as we can and get as much use out of it as we can. I want to say thank you to the fellas that went over to uh, take the cardboard back. Uh, you know, as we know, you know, Peter and others work on the cardboard trailer. and uh, The theory, of course, is get it all flattened out. Don't just chunk a box in there because it takes up so much room. But uh, <clears throat> for those of you who don't know, that story, the story of that trailer is a, a blessing in itself because a guy called me up one time and said, I've got this trailer that I use to haul stuff and uh, don't have a place to park it. They're not letting me park it in my neighborhood <laughs> because it's so big. And he said, I need a place to park it. Can I bring it over to the church? And I said, sure, bring it on over. And so he brought it over and parked it back there. And uh, uh, a little later he showed up and said, uh, Preacher, I, I think you ought to buy that trailer. <laughs> he said, I, I need to get rid of it. I, I, I'm not using it much anymore. And I need, to, I need to get rid of it. And I said, well, brother, I, I appreciate that, but we just don't have the money. You know, I don't know what it's worth, but I'm sure you'd be fair. Uh, but I, I just, you know, I, we just don't have any money, extra money to buy a trailer. And we really don't need one. And that really run, wasn't the whole truth, but I didn't know that. <laughs> but um, he said, okay, well, if you ever need a trailer, call me up. I'll sell it to you. I'll give you a good price on it. <laughs> I said, well, thank you. I'll keep that in mind. And I did. I prayed about it. Never did have any money, so I never did call him. And then finally one day he drove up out here with the trailer. You know, he's out there at the trailer. And I said, oh, you, what, you're going to use your trailer? No, he said, I, I come over here to uh, get some stuff, some tools that are on it. And I, I, need, I need those tools. I said, oh, okay. And he said, but I'm going to give you the trailer. And I said, well, brother, that's generous. Thank you. And he said, yeah, I'm going to give it to you. And so he gave us a trailer. And that's when we began to uh, exercise our recycling guy, Peter, and start using that trailer to load it up with cardboard. And when it's loaded up and when he does it right and he does it the right way, everything's flat. Get a lot of it in there. And pretty soon it gets pretty full. Pretty soon it gets so full that we, get, we have to take it to the dump. And I think we got like, what, $245, something like that. Not bad for just stuff that we would normally have to throw away and pay them to haul it off. <laughs> but when we do it with the trailer, we, we get a couple hundred bucks out of it or more uh, to be able to buy gas for the van and be able to buy other things that we need. So praise God for that. Thank Peter for doing the extra work he did and the other Peter and others that went and helped unload it and all that kind of thing. And uh, so uh, thank you for your help with the trailer. Thank you for your help with other things that's done here. And most of all, though, folks, all that we do, we talked about it on my TV program today. <coughs> uh, Mr. Ben Carson, I think, is going to be appointed as the... Uh, uh, housing urban uh, section, which is to help the poor. And it's been abused by, in all honesty, and the people that ran it, Obama and them messed it all up. And uh, Mr. Ben Carson is a great mighty man of God, and the president-elect asked him to serve as the secretary or the head of HUD, and he has said yes. And so pray for Dr. Ben Carson. He's a brain surgeon. He's a really a smart guy. But he loves the Lord. And I don't know of anybody else in this country that knows any more about the urban development of our country because he grew up in the ghetto. Uh, I mean, he, he really did. He, he grew up in the ghetto with no daddy, just his mama. And, uh, and then she died relatively young. Uh, and so he ended up by himself. But he grew up in the ghetto. He knows about it. He'd been there. Been there, done that, got the scars to prove it. But because his mom was so dedicated, she encouraged him to go to school, and he did. And he got his education. 
and uh, is now one of the leading brain surgeons in America. And uh, now he's going to be head of the house urban thing, whatever it is, in reference to help, how to help the poor and what to do to help the poor. So I think he's going to be a real asset to our country and to our new president. So pray for Dr. Ben Carson, okay? Anybody else have anything they'd like to share? All right, uh, if not, uh, we're going to do a little singing. We're going to sing our little song that we like to sing. And uh, I want y'all to join me. This is a day, this is a day that the Lord hath made, that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is a day, this is a day that the Lord has made. Anybody have anything they'd like to share about the day the Lord has given you this day? I've been super blessed <laughs> on my birthday by you folks and by my family and by my friends all over, literally all over the world. And to all of those of you who sent emails and Facebooks and Twitters and all of that kind of stuff that I don't really understand, <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. It's been very much appreciated. And uh, to God be the glory, great things he's done. I've often said about doing the work that we do here, I'm so glad that God works with us and through us and sometimes in my case in spite of us okay and so you pray for me you pray that I'll be the kind of pastor I ought to be to people you pray that I'll be tough when I need to be and soft when I need to be and sometimes it's hard to know it's hard to know which way to be there have been those that have backslidden and gotten away from the Lord Peter's one of them but now the Lord's brought him back and we praise God for that We've got others that have gone away and not come back. Just pray for all of them as well as we think about them. Now, anything else anybody has before we go? All right, tell you what we're going to do. I'm going to go back and turn the uh, camera and stuff off here in just a minute. And then we'll be dismissed to go out to the fellowship hall for a surprise that we're going to have. Uh, I'm not sure what that is, but I'm looking forward to finding out what that surprise is. I'm going to go back here where I can uh, turn this off. We won't have the camera on over there, but we'll talk about it on the next show. Talk about it on the show in the morning.